Welcome, 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 my lovelies. Um, so, in today's video, I thought, um, well, actually, I had a comment from somebody in my last video. Uh, they they were seeing outside from the workshop, and they could see um, water, a river, and a bridge. Um, but we don't have either. <laughs> so, so I'm not sure what they were looking at. So. Um, Hopefully this might um, jog their memory. I thought I would do my commute down to work from the house. House, work. Um, so we'll start off at the top of the, the garden here and we'll walk down and um, I'll show you what's, um, what's happening at the moment in the garden as far as plants and things are concerned and animals. <laughs> so it's been raining a lot. So the water butt, the overflow pipe has been um, dripping. And this truck is um, completely full. So we have uh, Nigel at the moment having a little drink. And I'll come round here and show you. We have a, a flower tub here, the big metal one, um, but it doesn't have drainage holes and it's filled with water. So we have a Georgie cat drinking the rainwater from here. <laughs> So here we go, let's get up. I'll just show you, um, I'm sitting on the, the bench. Um, so if we come round, I'll just show you the different sections of the garden. Um, so a Buddha there on the table. Some big rocks that were around the garden, we're going to, we're in the middle of replacing them because we're, we're doing the garden up, doing lots of pruning and cutting and stuff. And there's lots of plants just starting to come up. The daffodils have already been and gone, sadly, um, but we've got peonies coming up. They, that grows very big each year and lots of ornaments and things around the garden. Oh, and here we have Nigel showing you the um, one of the bushes, hydrangea, that is. It's going to be in flower later on. Oh, he loves the hydrangea, don't you, Nige? Hmm? So let's come down onto from the... Um, from the decking down onto the stone paving um, and here we have a, a seating area we have lots of bamboo everywhere and these big planters one each side um, they're in a sort of double an L shape like a yin and yang sign symbol when you if you look at it from above and this is a, a small square of uh, grass here that we can sit on in the summertime and then we have all these trees and bushes around us sitting here it's very nice during the spring and the summer um, oh there's tulips starting to come out just about to start flowering and if we come round back up okay so we sort we caught you on camera Georgie hmm? chasing Nigel <laughs> they love each other really <laughs> so here we have a, a whole wall of bamboo um, in a planter. Um, oh, and if I come down here, I just painted it recently. We've got a, um, a Japanese um, opera mask, a Chinese opera mask, um, out of wood. It's very old and deteriorating, um, but I, I painted it up as uh, an opera mask. Um, alongside a little, a, well, quite a big stone gargoyle. <laughs> We have quite a mixture of things. So if we look around here, we've got more. Um, we've got golden bamboo here and a black bamboo beside it. Um, and here we have the workshop. Uh, look, caught on camera. Georgie, stop annoying Nigel. You. <laughs> He's in a playful mood. Poor Nigel. Mm, you tell him. You tell him. Oh, he's going mad now, look. He's hiding. We see you. Mm. <laughs> oh, and here we have uh, a pathway down here and another seating area um, down the, the bottom of the garden. Um, so, okay, so... Let's go into the um, into the workshop. Okay, so this is looking in the workshop, um, looking out back into the garden. So um, I don't know if you maybe thought that was the bridge. I'm not sure. 
um, but it's just a, an archway in the garden. Um, but no, uh, no river, <laughs> as you can see. That's the garden line in the in the middle of the garden, just um, closed at the moment, not being used. So here we are, folks. I am at work. Yay! So here we are in the workshop, my lovelies. Welcome, 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 and um, cheers. <laughs> oh. Um, so as you can see, it's a nice day outside today. Um, I think the last video I was doing um, near the very end of it, it was raining quite heavy. So apologies if you could hear the, any noise, background noise. Um, I'm not sure um, of the rain. Um, but uh, no, it's a nicer day today. So it was a nicer stroll through the garden to work. Um, but it only takes me about 30 seconds if I take my time to look at the plants. 10 seconds if I'm in a hurry because it's raining. <laughs> so, okay, today um, I'm going to carry on with the um, Art Deco house. I'm getting really excited about it now, I have to say. I've had lots of lovely comments from you folks. Thank you so much for commenting. Um, speaking to myself here in this workshop um, to a screen um, and doing all this work, um, it really pays off when um, I realise there's other people at the other side of the screen watching um, and, uh, and and are willing to um, take a moment to place a little comment. Um, so it's really nice that I, I do know you're there. Hello. <laughs> Hopefully you all have a cup of tea or a coffee, um, as I say, or something in between. Um, and uh, are relaxed, ready to watch the video. Um, so, as I say, we'll carry on with the Art Deco house. Um, it's very it's very close to the end of the build, and then I'm going to start um, dressing it as well. Um, but I will get this video out now before I start on my um, commission. I'm waiting for um, bits to arrive um, to be posted to me, so I can uh, materials, so I can start the uh, the work. Um, but until then, I shall just carry on and do this. It's come at a good time because we're very near the, the end of the build. Um, so we're on the top floor of the build, really. And then there'll be stairs going up onto the roof. And there'll be a summer house or a sun lounge at the top of the roof. As uh, somebody pointed out, um, a new subscriber, hello there. Um, they pointed out that the um, photo I showed in my last uh, video was the Malibu Beach House by Doll's House Emporium, which it is, that is correct. Um, and I actually, um, just for people that don't know, I actually bought two. I bought the new kit, a new kit and somebody was selling uh, the same kit that they had changed their mind and didn't want it um, for certain reasons. Um, so um, the, the house is going to be much bigger because I've added extra floors by using the two kits. Um, I've cut out different bits of walls. I've um, put in, I've changed the walk, uh, put in elevators and the walkways. So it's changed the um, dynamics of the house. So it's not an exact as the kit should be. Um, I've added to it, but that's all part of the story. It makes it unique. It makes it yours. Um, hopefully makes it a lot nicer. And I've just realized that I've left from the last video, which was last night, I finished it. Um, I was using a roller brush and I've left it overnight and it's nearly dry, well, still slightly wet. So I shall go and give that a rinse and a wash, try and save the roller, the sponge, um, and we'll carry on. Yay! Okay. <laughs> um, some giant pots have moved in. <laughs> so this is the the top main floor, as I said, the beach house is going to go on top or the sun lounge. I don't know what it's called. Who knows? Who cares? Um, so, yes, this is the, the, the top floor basically going on. Um, and what I've done is cut the paper to size um, in this room and in this big room here. The paper is all cut to size. Um, that's an outdoor bit, so I haven't put flooring down there yet. I'm going to wait until I've um, uh, built the, the room so I can see what where I want the flooring to go. Um, but yes, yeah, so I've put flooring down. I've just used a washable PVA adhesive 
um, to lay the papers. I've cut them uh, to shape so they just fit like a jigsaw and then put them on and then smooth them down with a plastic um, store card uh, thing. And then I've just put bits of MDF on top of those and uh, lots of pots, heavy pots, just to keep it all down to dry. Um, so I'll, I'll leave that a couple of hours before I um, take those up and carry on. Okay, and here I've put the wallpaper up for the um, guest bedroom. So the flooring is down, the wallpaper is a, a pinky shade, pinky goldy shade, very art deco. And the lights at the back there. Um, it will have a ceiling light in this room as well. Um, but when I've glued the uh, paper in, that was just one sheet of paper, so it went down to the corner easily and along the back wall, um, just perfect length. And I've put wood across the top, there was lots of pegs just to hold it so it doesn't peel off uh, at the edges. And then I'll put skirting board on um, after I've cut round the door. And then coming into here, um, into the art studio, um, we've got the nice black and white tile floor in. Um, I'm going to then, I'm going to put some lights on the back wall, some, uh, probably some spotlights. I think would look quite good in a, in the, um, uh, the gallery, not the gallery, the uh, workshop. Um, do that. And then where the wall is finished here, I'm going to have an outdoor floor in here, but I've got a completely different floor in to go on the outside, which I think is going to look super. Oh, um, okay, so I'm just painting some bits of wood really. Um, nothing too, uh, nothing too exciting to, to look at. Um, but I just thought while I was doing this, um, these are bits for the rest of the building, the end of the building, before I put it together and um, show you. Um, but I just wanted to tell you a really strange um, story that has just happened. Um, so, um, if I can put you in the picture, last night um, John Boy and myself were sitting watching television and we were watching some recorded programmes that we'd recorded and one of them was, um, uh, it's a gentleman that does um, uh, British rail journeys around, around uh, Great Britain um, and his name is Michael Portillo um, so everyone in the UK will know who I'm talking about. Um, but he goes around the country, goes around the UK and around the world um, to different places and you learn about them. It's a sort of, uh, sort of ed educational thing really. Um, so last night we were watching and um, this uh, Michael Portillo um, on his train journey goes up to a place or stops off in a place in Scotland or a few places in Scotland and one of them was a place called Dunkeld. And as that came on, instantly I picked up the remote and paused it um, because I had to tell John Boy um, about Dunkeld. I used to live sort of, I suppose, about an hour from there. I can't remember quite how far. Um, and uh, I used to do hairdressing uh, many, many years ago. And a family that I used to go to in the village that I lived in, I used to cut their hair, all of them. Uh, the mum, the dad, the two two little boys, two two little kids, um, and did their hair for years. And eventually, they moved away from the village and they moved to this place called Dunkeld. And um, mainly because I really enjoyed their company so much, I agreed to carry on every so many weeks and drive out to Dunkeld um, to do their hair. And that's been. That was many years ago, but I've, I, I knew them for many years. And um, so they were a big part in my life um, and a really, really fun memory. And I had to stop the video to tell John while we were looking at this overhead view of Dunkeld. And I was saying that's the main street. And if you go up there and up a dirt track, you come to this um, rest restored uh, farmhouse, beautiful stone built stone uh, farmhouse. Um, that they lived in and I talked all about the family and told him about how lovely they were um, how I wish I still knew them um, whatever um, 
And then we watched the rest of the program. <clears throat> and that night, that last night in bed, part of uh, part of what I do, obviously, as you guys know, is go through what I'm doing with the house or the project that I'm working on. But part of it, I stopped and had a break in my head and thought about the family again and thought, they're such a lovely family. I miss them so much. I really do. And we've lost contact over the years. I moved from there eventually and I lived in uh, the city of York for about 12 years. Then I moved down here to Essex and I've been here 16, 17 years. Um, and today, um, not half an hour ago, um, I was working on the house, filming bits for you guys, and my phone pinged. I don't know why I'm pointing at my phone because that's an empty case. My phone is actually what I'm using to film on. So, on my phone, <laughs> um, it pinged, and it was Facebook, um, and it was the family from Dunkeld that had found me on Facebook, and their son, um, uh, he, he messaged me because he said, Mum isn't that great with the technology, and he could sort of do it a bit quicker. Um, I know how that feels, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, but they, were, they, were, they got in touch with me after all these years today and i spoke about them and went on about them last night when we were sitting watching tv um i have to say i was i was shocked to say the least but i just want to say how shocking is that that's been i don't know 20 years 30 years i can't remember how long ago it was that i moved from um from from scotland um <laughs> I just thought I'd tell you. In fact, I was so shocked, I had to go and make a fresh cup of tea, which I haven't started on yet. Cheers, my lovelies. So, if any of that family are watching, <laughs> because I did tell them that I do YouTube, um, Marjorie and Gordon, mum and dad, uh, Nigel, son, he's with them at the moment. Um, <laughs> I just want to say hello and I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart whatever made you decide to get in touch with me and I won't be losing contact now now I've got your number look out <laughs> anyway let's move on with the house I just thought I'd tell you guys something really lovely that's just happened to me and it really really is nice to hear from from old friends well not that old we're still quite young really anyway Let's move on. <laughs> okay, so here we have in the studio a row of um, spotlights. They do sort of swivel in and out, so um, I can sort of move them around once they're lit. Um, and here we have coming out onto the um, porch area um, with the sliding doors to open. And I've done a um, a tiled floor in, so hard plastic um, sheets, it's very small, but you break up or keep them together, you do what you want with them. Um, so I've put those down and I've cut them in a, a curve there to go with the outside wall. The outside wall has sheets of glass in for safety so nobody falls out because it's quite high up now. <laughs> um, and at the back there where I've left a uh, space, I've just done the sheets straight out. Um, I've left that because I'm going to build something to fit in that uh, little nook there. Um, so that's part of the dressing up, which I can't wait to start doing. Making things for it, building things. Um, so here we have the, the wall at the back and the bit at the top there. So all that's left now, I'm going to put stairs in here, going up to here and at the top here. We have the uh, roof garden. Sorry about the shaky hand, but I'm holding my arm straight up in the air to get to this because it's now very tall. So let's build the um, the sun lounge that goes on top. Right. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm just going to just put these bits together again. This is all the the um, sun lounge at the top. Um, it did have windows. I've taken those out, cleaned them. Painted the wood either side, a couple of coats, <coughs> and now I'm um, just starting to put them back together again. So I thought I would sit and chat 
while I um, while I put these bits back again. Um, so I don't know if you can see smoke. I've got my incense burner here. Um, so if you see smoke rising from beside me, don't start screaming at the TV that there's a, a fire. <laughs> I don't know whoever made up the um, that saying. There's no smoke without fire. I was talking a load of rubbish. <laughs> there's smoke, no fire. <laughs> um. Yes. So uh, I was actually while I was just working away here, I was thinking about. Um, thinking about holidays that I had in uh, in the States um, and we're, we're talking uh, many years ago um, but I just thought I'd tell you tell you a couple of tales of um, things that happened um, while I was there um, <laughs> I'm thinking specific well at the moment I'm thinking of the uh, the very first time I went to the States I was with my previous partner um, at the time and uh, all was going very well we we had the flight he'd been going over since he was 10 years old um so he was used to it half his family well, most of his family lived over there relatives um but uh, for me it was the first time i'd been to the states and up until that point obviously i'd only ever seen america or parts of america on the tv and that was films documentaries news whatever um, but obviously I, I sort of grew up thinking or learning that everything was bigger than better in um, in, in uh, the States. Um, so that was the impression that I had. Um, so on our arrival at um, JFK um, Airport, obviously that was an experience in itself. It's absolutely huge. Um, so it started there as we arrived, all the excitement. I have to tell you, while I'm telling you this, um, I wasn't sort of 9, 10, 12 years old at the time. I was in my thir early 30s. So this is coming from a, a, a man that was hum uh, that was um, early 30s in his first experience in the States. So we arrived and we were met by um, um, Aunt Verna and... Um, and her, and her partner, oh, I can't remember his name at the moment. Um, but anyway, oh, George, Uncle George. So we were met by them, first of all. It was all excitement, hugs, and so excited you could come over, blah, blah, blah. And I was just uh, absolutely amazed by everything around me. <laughs> I was just like a child. It was brilliant. So within their car, obviously, it was a huge big car. Far too big for any human being, really, but there you go. Um, and we were driving, like driving out of the airport. Um, and as we're driving along, we passed this building. And it was it was just a humongous building um, with a big flat roof. I can still picture it now. And it was uh, coming up for Christmas time. And on the side of the building were these massive big snowflakes all lit up. Um, I mean, they could have been 20 feet high, I don't really know, but they were they were snowflakes. And um, as we're driving past in the car, I'm looking at all different things, and I saw this building, saw the snowflakes, and shouted, said to my partner at the time, um, like, oh my God, look at that building over there, look at the huge big snowflakes down the side of the building. Oh, I'm so excited, it's, it's just going to be a great holiday. And Verna and George, George was driving and Verna was sitting in the front with him. And they both looked across at this big building with the huge big snowflakes on them. And she looked round at me and she said, Rich, it's a parking lot. <laughs> it was the, one of the car parks for JFK Airport. <laughs> and I thought it was some, some magnificent building in, in America, the first one I'd seen. And she, and she she just looked at me and then she looked at Uncle George and she said, George, I think this is going to be one hell of a holiday. <laughs> she just burst out laughing. <laughs> and of course, the excitement started from that moment on. And uh, oh, we ha over the years, we have laughed back at it. I've laughed at myself. It's the uh, it's uh, the best thing you can do is to see your own sense of humour.
Um, and of course, driving along there as well, another exciting thing. <laughs> we drove through one toll barrier, um, and as we drove past, there was no man or lady at the at the cabin to take your money like they had in the UK at that time. They don't now, but they did then. And I thought, where is everyone? Why? What? what why are we? What are we doing? And he slowed down, opened the window, and threw out a couple of coins into this like a baseball basket <laughs> perfectly normal for them it's what they're brought up with it's what they're used to and my the look on my face was like the look of amazement i couldn't believe that's all you did so when we came to another toll we did at some point and i said to my partner i said oh my god we're coming to one of the where you just throw the money in and <laughs> and aunt verna said Rich, would you like to throw the money in the big basket? <laughs> and I, I was hysterical with excitement, I have to say. <laughs> I can't believe I'm telling you all this. You must, um, maybe you've had the impression of me as being um, reasonably good at what I do. Little did you know, <laughs> I'm a complete child inside. <laughs> so, of course, I grabbed the, grabbed the money off them and they slowed right down. Um, so I could reach out the window and drop <laughs> drop it into the basket. But apparently I did it so elegantly. <laughs> Usually they're in a hurry and they do this over their shoulder and it just happens to be right. I didn't want to miss in case we had to stop and get out and then it would have held the cars up. <laughs> they, uh, I think they, well, I don't think they, they very much did enjoy um, our, our visit <laughs> to the States. Absolutely amazing. Rich, it's a parking lot. <laughs> oh dear. Um, by the way, these, the slotted bits at the top of each section that I'm pushing down, I don't really need to, in fact, I might not bother. Um, I don't really need to put glue in them um, because there's going to be a flat roof on top and that will be glued on. So I'm really sort of doing uh, overkill here, as we would say. Um, but yes, oh, and, uh, <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you about another time <laughs> when you think after all these years and I'm still laughing about it. So another visit to the, to the States, um, and we were staying with different, uh, all the relatives, but at different times. So at this point we were staying with, um, some, uh, an uncle and uh, his his wife in um oh where was it? in long island across i would say across the river from manhattan and um, just a little hop skip and a jump a brilliant place really bohemian and um, the shops there were just um, i just loved all the little uh, independent shops and um this is very difficult to line up and get back in just so you can see what experience i'm having but i shall carry on there we are until we get it right um so we were staying with with, with these other family members in uh, city island and um oh and while we were there we, we came out of their house at one point we were going to go for a walk along the town along the main street and the man next door was putting his rubbish out and um and they said let's let's introduce you to our neighbor so they uh, introduced me to this man who I vaguely recognised and thought, I remember thinking at the time, this is so weird, I feel like I know you. Um, obviously I didn't because I'd never been over there and this was just their next door neighbour. It turned out to be, I think it was, uh, I think he was called Big Daddy in The Sopranos, lived in City Island back then. Um, and that was their neighbour and he was a great big, huge guy and so friendly um, it was really it made me laugh afterwards thinking um, how friendly someone could be when they're portrayed as a, a killer really <laughs> but the guy wouldn't have hurt a fly he was such a nice nice person so that's very that's where I've painted it it's very stiff now to go back in so I will mess about with that in fact I'm going to get a piece of wood on here 
um, just in case you have problems, things like this. Uh, a piece of wood on here and balance it very securely and tap it with a hammer. Obviously I'm not going to hammer the wood itself because that could dent it. Um, so I'm just going to get a hammer, tap that down and then we'll carry on. I think then we're ready to put the building together. Hurrah! Right, now let's um, start putting this together. Um, need more glue. Um, so, <laughs> uh, another funny thing. Another funny thing that happened, while we were staying there, um, we were in, in City Island, we were at one point, the mother, um, now this is, we, we're talking mother and a husband and two young children, um, the mother was the local um, arm ladies arm wrestling champion at the time, um, which I'd never even heard of before. I didn't even know it existed, so to me I was um, absolutely amazed right from the start. Um, and she was she had she had a, a a match or whatever they call it um, due to happen in a few days, and she asked me and my partner if we wanted to go with her. Um, she was taking the children, taking the kids, um, but her husband was staying uh, at work. He was uh, working then. Um, so it was a, a road trip, yay! So uh, I was going on my first ever American road trip, which I think you know me all well enough now, guys, that I was beside myself with excitement going out on the big road. <laughs> Just when I look back now, <laughs> absolutely amazing. So anyway, so yes, we were going on this big road trip so that she could do this arm wrestling match and this was to do one arm wrestle with one other woman that was also a champion somewhere else for them to see who was the champion out of those two so the whole thing that we went to the whole event was all people arm wrestling and drinking lots of beer apparently um and um but she was going to this thing just to do this one match so it was a 15, 16 hour drive and it took us two days. We stayed overnight in a hotel or a motel um, and then carried on the next day. Um, it was an extreme trip for me. I never got over the fact that, that she was doing this um, for, for, for this one thing. Um, but anyway, we... Um, so we, we, we stopped overnight somewhere in a motel. Again, all I, I don't know if any of you have heard the film Psycho, um, but <laughs> but staying in this hotel, it was like the Bates Motel in Psycho. Um, it looked so similar. Um, I was just <laughs> amazed by the whole thing. Um, so when I told her as well, she thought this was hysterical, um, but she did warn us to keep the light on at night when we'd gone to sleep. She was only joking, but <laughs> but she knew it would frighten the life out of me. So I think in, in all, the, the, going over there with all the people we stayed with, I think I, um, I gave them all a laugh at my expense. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I'm getting that feeling. <laughs> but anyway, um, so we carried on the next day. And to get there, we actually went to um, Illinois. Which at the time, yes, when we arrived there and I saw the sign, um, I thought it was French or the way it was spelled. And I said, what a lovely name for a place, Illinois. <laughs> and she thought this, even the kids when were crying in the back seat of this, this car with us, rolling about crying with laughter. They'd never met or seen anyone like me, apparently. Hopefully never meet anyone like me again, because <laughs> I'm sure it didn't do their health any good. But, um, so oh, let me get a set square, so I can square this off. Um, so, <laughs> so uh, yes, yeah, so, yeah, so uh, the whole trip we were there, when we did get there, she was telling folks that um, I was so excited because I'd never been to Illinois before. <laughs> so, anyway... Moving on. Um, oh, I can actually line this up with the grids on the uh, table. While I'm talking, I'm not thinking. Sorry, guys. 
I'm sure someone out there is saying just line it up. You've got lines already there, Rich. So, yeah, so anyway, so while we were there, um, actually we were an hour early as well. She was in a bit of a panic first thing in the morning until even she found out that we jumped an hour time zone just through traveling, um, which was the first time in my life I'd ever done a car trip and traveled in a time zone. Um, you know, the whole thing was mind blowing to me. So, yeah, so we had to move our watches um, back. Um, so we, she was more relaxed then. Um, that was the first time I'd had um, grits for breakfast. I can't even remember what it is or what it was. I think it was some kind of oats or some kind of wheat type stuff. A lot of you will know exactly what I'm talking about and some of you won't. Um, but I have to say it was quite different. I'd never had anything like it before. Um, but I did actually have it again at some point in a service station that we stopped at because I quite liked it at the time. So, yeah, so while we were there <laughs> on the actual day, um, I'm putting this bit here, I think. That's what I'm doing. Um, and then uh, while we were there, there was lots of people everywhere. As I say, lots of drinking going on. Um, it was uh, quite a, quite an occasion. And by the way, after doing all that journey, um, her the uh, the cousin's uh, arm wrestle match lasted, I think, less than thirty seconds, and she won. So she was all excited and happy because she was now the queen of arm wrestling. Um, but uh, yeah, so we'd done all this driving for two days. Um, so many, so many miles um, for a less than thirty second event, um, which again, we, as I was saying at the time to my partner, only in America, really, only in America, no one would have done this in any other country in the world, and that's what I loved about the place. By the way, I'm not knocking America at all. Um, uh, I. I absolutely loved it. I loved every moment there. And if I had the money um, and, and and the means, I would absolutely go back. Absolutely. At the drop of a hat. Um, but, um, yeah, so while we were there, meanwhile, she's waiting to do this match. And we're just talking and talking to other people. She met some people she knew in the business as so she was introducing us. And um, all of a sudden, I saw this big, um, black guy he was one of the arm not everyone there was arm wrestling there was family and there was even there was uh, children there lots of children it was a big family thing um but this there was this um black guy there and he looked like he could kill you with a with a look um and i was just so excited so excited with the day so excited with what was happening in my life at that moment because we were there and i wasn't back home feeling bored um, or whatever um, and I said to her um, his t-shirt that he was wearing they had a saying at the time it's probably old-fashioned now um, but it was um, if you were uh, annoying someone they would say um, don't make me open that can of whip ass and that was a and that was a saying it might be said now if it is hurrah I love I love fun sayings that, that don't um, disappear in time um, but he had a t-shirt on with this animal and a can and it had whip ass on the can and the the, 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 lo the slogan was don't make me do it and the do was spelt d-e-w don't make me do it and I was so excited about his t-shirt and I said to her I want that man's t-shirt to take home with me I want them and she just looked at me like that is never going to happen in a month of Sundays. Um, and I said, oh, but I can. and she said, OK, Rich, she says, go ahead, go up and ask him. <laughs> so she was standing there, obviously close by, waiting to, um, uh, you know, soften the, the blow or whatever. And um, <laughs> so I went up to this guy and he just looked at me and I says, excuse me, sir. Um, I really like your T-shirt. I've never seen one like it before. And I would really like to have it. 
to take home with me as something to remember my holidays. And he just looked at me and she looked at him. He looked at her and then the two of them nearly wet themselves laughing. They, I've never seen a, a man of his stature go hysterical the way this guy did. And I just looked thinking, have I said the wrong thing? <laughs> oh God, I was so naive. So, <laughs> and he thought this was so amazing that he, um, he took his T-shirt off for me and handed it to me. But the only deal he was going to do was, he said, if I give you my T-shirt, then I want her T-shirt in replace, in replacement. And this was, I'm talking about our um, cousin that we were with, or the cousin's wife. And she just looked and she had clothes on underneath her T-shirt that weren't showing, but it looked like if she took it off, she'd have nothing on. And she said, it's a deal, shake the man's hand. So I shook this guy's hand and she just stood there, pulled her T-shirt off. And he looked so disappointed because she still had clothing on underneath. And of course, we all ended up laughing again. He took the T-shirt. He obviously couldn't put it on. He was three times bigger than her. Um, so, uh, so that was the deal done. So after that, we were, you know, she said to me, on no account, Rich, talk to any strangers while we're here. Do you hear me? <laughs> I need to see you say yes. <laughs> so, I, I just need to get a bit of Perspex to um, glue into this window before I put it in. So I shall pause the video and get that done. Okay, so, yes, we're running again. Um, by the way, just so you know, um, in case no one's um, put the Perspex in before or glued it into place, that's what I use, glue and glaze. Um, it's a white glue. I don't know if you can see it on the inside of that at all, along the edge there. Just little dabs of white. Um, it does dry clear and it is for putting in Perspex windows. Um, so you don't get any glue marks left on it, which is really handy. Right, okay. So I'm just going to place that there, glue those two bits and then we'll put the roof on. Um, and there's a bit at the back to hold it, so it will keep it all um, square. Um, so, yes, so, so the excitement didn't stop there, folks. Oh, no. Um, so the, the, we had done the, uh, the, the arm wrestling and we had the day there. And then we started our, <clears throat> started our drive back home again. By the way, to do this arm wrestling competition that lasted less than 30 seconds, we drove through four states across America, um, starting in New York, where they lived in City Island, um, through across um, Pennsylvania, then we went across through Ohio, then we went through Indiana, and then we ended up in Illinois. <laughs> um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so it was it was a big journey, a very long journey. So on the way back. Um, of course, she didn't do all the driving. Um, I love driving, loved driving then. I still love driving now. I don't know what I would do if I wasn't able to drive a car. Um, and I was used to automatics because I had an automatic at home at the time. And I do now as well. I like automatics. Um, so, of course, she um, allowed me to um, drive quite a lot of the way home as well just to take uh, make it a bit easier for everyone and it was a lovely sunny day and we're driving back with on this long straight road it looked like the road to nowhere um, in England we're used to lots of bends and turns and roundabouts I hate roundabouts by the way um, and uh, but anyway we're driving along it was a lovely sunny morning as we drive as we'd stayed overnight and then we're driving along and uh, there was nothing in sight, lots of uh, lots of lush greenery to the side of the road um, and bit, lakes, bits of water here and there. And uh, as we're driving along, as I'm driving along, all of a sudden the car decides to have a blowout and one of the tyres explodes. So, <laughs> as that happened, 
and I realised obviously something's wrong here. Um, the tyre on my side had, had gone down and the, you could feel it in the, in the car obviously with the tyre going down. Um, and I thought to myself, well, we just have to pull in. There was, there was no one on the road. It was a great big, there was a whole lane that you could just pull into all the way along this road. Um, but <laughs> poor Christine sitting next to me in the passenger seat. Um, I don't know why I'm going like that because the passenger would be on that side. Of course, it's a different side of driving. I'm so used to our side. Um, as she's sitting there and realised what had happened, she screams, we've had a blowout, we've had a blowout. And I'm thinking, yes, that's right. I'm just going to pull in and stop and we'll change the tyre. And she was <laughs> she was hysterical because I was driving. She wasn't used to me driving her car, um, I, you know, all these different things. And um, she was screaming, Rich, Rich, oh my God, oh my God, pull in, pull in. We've got to blow. <laughs> and as we're doing that and I'm driving in, just pulling into the, the side of the lane, I looked out and there was this big river waterway going along and there were thousands and thousands of bulrushes, great big tall bulrushes with the brown bits on the top. We have them in this country, but I'd never seen such a mass of them in, in one area before. And as I'm pulling in and the car's doing this, <laughs> I looked out the window and went, oh, look at the lovely bulrushes. <laughs> so, so then we pulled in and stopped and... And my my co-pilot was sitting there looking like she'd been through 10 rounds of boxing with somebody. <laughs> and she, after all what um, she just looked at me and she went, look at the lovely bulrushes. <laughs> and, I, and I just looked back and I said, well, they're really pretty. <laughs> so, of course... In the end, that helped her because she went into hysterics afterwards. We stopped the car, we got out, I helped, we got the tired out, we took a tired off, we put a tired on, no big deal, and uh, put the damaged tire in the, in the trunk. I was going to say the boot, but it was the trunk at the time. Um, and we carried on. I carried on driving and we got home nice and safely. But I have to say, that was... Years ago now, I'm 63, this is when I was 40, 23 years ago. Um, sadly, I parted with my partner uh, a while after that, and we kept, we were very amicable, we kept in contact for a long, long time, but just through time we faded, um, so his relations have faded from me as well, with communication, um, just a natural uh, sequence of events. But I have to say, for years after that, I had an email once a year from Christine and it was happy happy bull rush day <laughs> whatever date it was that we that had the accident <laughs> so every now and again in fact through the post one day I got a box delivered and it had some artificial bull rushes in it and this was sent by her from America to me in the UK and I just remember that moment for still now like it was yesterday. <laughs> so I thought I would share those little stories with you folks. I have to say I have more because things like this just seem to happen in my life. Different events, different things. Um, but I won't bore you with them now. <laughs> but what I will do is I'm going to let this dry. First of all, um, I'll have to get a little doorknob for the, for the door. Um, I'm going to let this dry and then oh, I'm going to put the roof on. It's a flat roof and there's a piece of wood fitted there. It's all, it came with the kit and that wedges in the front of the back wall so you know the whole thing is square and that will go on on top. I won't put it on now. I'm just going to let these, let these parts dry. But it's all squared off on the grids, on the board, which obviously is a, a great way to um, keep, the, keep everything square. Um, once that's dry, I'll put this on. Um, on top of this goes, if I can show you, goes a, a sunroof. Now that's got perspex in it. I've just put that in, um, but it's curved, a curved roof, sunroof. And that just rests on top. In fact, I could glue this on, just square it off and, and glue that on first of all. 
So what I will do is I'll, I'll uh, leave now, I shall glue this on, glue the roof on, and then put the building up on the top of this um, five, one, two, three, four, five storey building. So this will be the sixth storey. Um, and then we'll see how it's looking. I'm getting very excited, I have to say, um, because after I've done this, there'll just be a bit of indoor internal decorating. I've got um, skirting boards or baseboards to put in some of the rooms, um, things like that. Um, and then is going to start the process of dressing the house, which will be uh, a video shortly after this one, hopefully. Um, and that I've got different pieces for different rooms, but nowhere near enough to fill the house. So that is going to be a whole new journey. Um, so it will be a, a, a new video to show you of all some of the lovely, lovely things I've got for this house. I'm really excited. Some of the things I've had for a few years now um, and I'm so excited to um, put them in. Um, and I'm going to make some things. I'll think up other things that I want to make as well. So some of that, if I can, I will video if I think they're good enough to show um, me making them. Um, then and you might learn something from that then I'll uh, then I'll video it um, if what I'm making seems to look a load of rubbish then I'll just show you at the end but I won't show you how I made it <laughs> you won't want to know how to make rubbish so thank you very very much for watching folks um, I hope I didn't bore you to death with my tales of um, of the state um, but if you're interested at any point I will certainly, I certainly have other tales to tell you, not just of the states, but just of things that have happened to me um, in my 63 years. So, cheers. Oh, lovely cup of tea. Um, I'm going to go and read my new book that I'm reading for about half an hour and let this dry off so it's nice and square. And then I'll settle the roof on, glue it round there get that on top and let that dry and um, so that's ready for the next video um, to show you the roof on so thank you very much as always for watching folks thank you for listening hope I didn't bore you too much let me know if um, if you were interested in my stories um, and uh, I'll think about some telling you some others <laughs> okay take care everyone nice to speak to you and I hope you're well stay well bye